except for that one with a yellow Welcome along to London Calling, and we're looking back on another victory. I tell you what, we can get used to this, Mr. Sure Dale, can, sure we? can. We've got plenty coming up on tonight's show. We've got an exclusive interview with Ruben Emir Gangalingham, which was uh, conducted by Mr. Taylor here. Um, he says plenty to say, well worth a listening. Uh, that's coming up. We're also going to be joined live here in the studio by Kyan Prince's dad, Mark Prince. He's actually making a return to the boxing ring in Kyan's memory. Um, so we'll be catching up with him. Um, he's got quite an incredible career as a boxer as well. So we'll be catching up with him on that, as well as, of course, talking about Kyan and the Kyan Prince Foundation, the work that has come from that, and how it's changed Mark as a person as well. So we'll be catching up with him. As I say, he'll be joining us for the second half of the show, live here in the studio. We'll be looking back on that victory against Ipswich Town. We left it very, very late. But a star <laughs> was born in Tom Hitchcock. So we're going to be looking into exactly who he is. I don't think... Uh, I think there was quite a few fans who, when the substitution was made, they were looking on the back of the programme. I don't even think his name was on the back of the programme. Webby! Webby, did you not see that one coming? (laughs) Hey, So we've got that coming up as well. On top of that, we've got um, the latest from Bet Victor and Charlie McCann looking ahead to the weekend's game against Bolton. We've also got the QPR Stat of the Week coming up and a fantastic (coughs) competition as well. You can win a signed shirt from a player of your choice with a personalised message. That's coming up as well. You're watching London Calling, brought to you in association with Equate. Equate is a natural energy drink containing only natural ingredients. Fruit juices, ginseng, <coughs> guarana, green tea and just a nip of natural caffeine from the green coffee bean. And there's enough fruit juice in each can to give you one of your five a day. Need a natural lift? Try Equate. OK, firstly, let's start with that competition. And the question is... You've got to basically work out the answer to this little video. The player I enjoyed playing at QPR with the most was... So there you go, Les Ferdinand. Which player did he most enjoy playing with during his time at Loftus Road? Uh, Les was actually here at Loftus Road yesterday for the Insider magazine. What's what's the latest on that, Ian? When's that coming out? And what exactly is in it? So Early shameless promo in yeah, it. Yeah, shameless plug at the start of the program. Before I say that, I want to say get well soon to QPR Liam. Um, he's very ill, apparently, in bed. A couple of people on Twitter are saying he's milking it a bit, but <laughs> we wish him all the best for a speedy recovery. Um, September, first, first, second week of September, we're planning, depending on what goes on on deadline day, we might be able to add a feature or two to the to the magazine uh, late on, but early week of September, yesterday was the Arsenal Lads feature, which we did last time with uh, Bertram, Rowlands, Cook and Gallon. This time we were uh, honoured yesterday, privileged to be joined by Jerry Francis, Les Ferdinand, Andy Impey, and not forgetting Clive Wilson. Um, we spent about 45 minutes to an hour with them, didn't we? Yeah, Fantastic, yeah. some great stories, including their memories on the late great Alan McDonald and loads of other stuff. Uh, really good fun, but also a serious side to it as well, talking about how Jerry left QPR, Les talking about his loan spell out in Turkey prior mm-hmm. to becoming a hero at Loftus Road. So plenty plenty for Ars fans to get their teeth into, and lots, lots more as well. Yeah, and that's free as well, so that's out the first or second week in good September. Plug. I know, like that. There's also an exclusive interview with Ars fans' favourite, Bob Hazel, plenty more besides. So that's all coming up, but I suppose we've got to start with um, the... Looking back on Ipswich Town, it was it was very nervy. It was another good performance, I thought. Yeah. We created a number of chances, but you just think, well, when Charlie Austin hits the bar from close range, you think it's one of those days we could play all night and not score. Thankfully, that didn't happen. This is what happened when Ipswich came to town on Saturday. Six for QPR so far as they adjust to life back in the championship, taking on Ipswich Town, who have just one away win in 2013. Looking for Zamora, it's been flicked on, and the whistle has gone. Charlie Austin was trying to make the most of it, but couldn't have counted. It's a very useful climb. This is right, Phillips. Well, there's a few appeals for it, I think, will be handball, but it's going to be a corner. Options left and right for Austin. Heads out to the right hand side. Back in for Austin. Really good stop that from Scott Loach to deny the summer signing from Burnley, who got the shot away. Waiting for Hewitt to make the run and well, cross shot. Don't know, but it was a pretty good chance. 
drilled it across. Probably a shot, actually. Harry Barton will take this free kick. It's a good delivery in, and it's come back off the bar and done into the side netting. I think some people in the ground thought that was in. Clint Hill's header came back off the bar, and his central defensive partner couldn't put it in. All right, Phillips up against Hewitt. Great ball in. Must be for Walston, surely! Hits the bar. Second time QPR have rattled that crossbar. QPR have dominated. Time is running out for them. Sean Wright Phillips still has plenty of legs in him. Played across. Hitchcock! The 20 year old on his Rangers debut. The son of the goalkeeping coach, Kevin. He's been only on the field for seven minutes. He couldn't miss that. Last attempt at a siege on the QPR goal. The header is straight at Rob Green from Tommy Smith. And QPR celebrate victory thanks to the rookie, Tom Hitchcock. They beat Ipswich 1 0. I'll tell you what, one absolute dream debut from Tom Hitchcock. I think I said to him, or, or certainly I think it was Joey actually, I said to him, yeah, that's schoolboy's own stuff, isn't it? You dream of that, coming off the bench, uh, on your debut, at home, in front of the loft end, doesn't get much and better. And it's got a 90th minute winner with your dad as a coach in the dugout. And that was incredible, I mean, we know Kevin Hitchcock quite well, he's, he's a man of a lot of words, he, he does get slightly he carried away, he was lost for words afterwards, mm. wasn't he? He was just... He was so proud and you could see what it meant and not just him but when we were down the tunnel afterwards, Frankie Sutherland was down there, Max Ema, uh, Mo Sharif was on the bench, everybody, everybody was so pleased for him Yeah, and, and obviously a great result. Yeah and also it was quite a nice touch, um, Kevin Hitchcock actually does the, the paperwork if you like of the substitution to mm -hmm. hand over to the fourth official but it isn't always Kevin Hitchcock who goes and calls down the sub who's warming up that might be Joe that might be Kevin that might even be Harry yeah. but Harry actually turned to Kevin Hitchcock and said go and get your yeah. son it's nice so it's lovely in, that, in the heat of the moment as yeah. well to, to think like that to, to give Kevin that responsibility yeah. like, to call his son and tell him he's about to come on was a fantastic gesture from Harry great respect as well yeah and great that it came off well certainly at the final whistle the fans are all jumping for joy and delighted and uh, it's becoming very popular we weren't able to see it much last season owing <laughs> to results but Tunnel Cam is proving very popular this is what happened down the tunnel after Ipswich Great scenes at the end there and definitely a special moment for the Hitchcock Incredible. family. 
Just with regards to the competition, uh, the question was, who did Les Ferdinand most enjoy playing with during his spell here at Loftus Road? We've had a few guesses, but none right. No, um, Aaron QPR says Paul Furlong. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think those two would have played together. And um, the other one that, that people are guessing at is Roy Wegley, and I exclusively feel that that's wrong as well, Paul. So keep them coming. Use the hashtag LCI. Okay, so who did Les Ferdinand most enjoy playing with during his time at Loftus Road? We're still awaiting the correct answer. And don't forget you win a signed QPR shirt from a player of your choice with a personalised message. It does not get much better than that, does it? So that's all to come. With regards to, we've had a query from Fraser Campbell. I'm sure this is a query from a lot of QPR fans. Speculation about a new stadium, yeah, lot in the media. What can you tell us? Yeah, well, there's not too much uh, we can say uh, at this stage, really, as you know. You know, it's, it's a delicate stage still, but it is an option. Uh, it's something that the club are looking into. But as and when we can say more, we will. But um, you know, aside from the short statement we made yesterday, I think um, that that's all for now. But exciting, very exciting. Absolutely. Okay, and back to the question of who is Tom Hitchcock. We'll, we'll give you info about his background in a moment. Firstly, this is the first exclusive and only exclusive interview that he conducted following the game on Saturday. Um, he spoke with us, and this is what Tom had to say after his dream debut. And just talk us through the goal of what you can actually remember. Oh, I can't really remember a lot, but uh, it was a great feeling, best feeling of my life. And in front of the loft as well. Yeah, it's a great feeling. Frankly, uh, time to run to the yard block if I scored, so I had to run over there for him. And did you manage to get a goal celebration? Because I couldn't see a thing. You were just absolutely uh, smothered in uh, QPR players. Yeah, no, I didn't really get a chance. didn't really know what to do. <laughs> I, I, I think your dad was coming on the pitch as well. Yeah, I think he was happy for me. So, yeah, it's good. And what, what next? Oh, I've just got to keep going, mate. Like, keep training hard and see what happens. Just keep scoring goals. QPR have dominated. Time is running out for them. Sean Wright Phillips still has plenty of legs in him. Played across. Hitchcock! The 20 year old on his Rangers debut. The son of the goalkeeping coach, Kevin. He's been only on the field for seven minutes. He couldn't miss that. Well, he certainly enjoyed that. And it's it must great be watching it again. Complete, but it must be quite incredible. He's 20 years old, but. He's not been involved at all. No. Then suddenly he's on the bench, which is incredible. Suddenly he's coming on, which is amazing. Then he scores. Yeah. And afterwards, everyone wants a piece of him. Everyone's coming over to hug him. Really thrown into the line right there. It's a, it's a typical footballing cliche, is it? but you couldn't write that script, no, could you, to come on not, there yeah. and, and score. I mean, there was huge interest in him after the game from the media, but I think be, between us, we, we spoke afterwards and said, probably not the right time to put him up. I mean, he came off the, off the pitch in tears, didn't mm. he? God bless him. And, yeah, it was it was just an inc- incredible day for him, and we've done a nice piece with Sky Sports News today with with him and his dad, haven't we? That yeah. I think goes out ahead of the game at some stage tomorrow on Sky. So that's a really interesting piece. But he's a good kid. We got we got a number of good kids coming through, and mm. Harry proved in pre season. Yeah, he'll give them their chances, and then Tom's come on and. Lots yeah, of, of course, because Max Eamon and Mo Sharif were also on yeah. the bench. And Frankie was on in, the, as well. in the 20, but obviously didn't make the 18. And you'd expect a, two, a couple of them to be involved again this weekend. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. OK, so who is Tom Hitchcock? People want to know a little <laughs> bit more about the, the star striker that he, he's suddenly become. Well, let's have a look at his career. He he actually began at Watford. He came through at the... He joined them at under-9s when his dad, Kevin, was a goalkeeping coach there. And then he joined Blackburn, joining their under-12s when... Kevin went there as goalkeeper coach. Obviously, Tom was only 11 years old, so the whole family moved up to the north and he had a, a trial with the Ewood Park outfit and he joined them at under 12. Then he played for their under 18s at the age of 15, which is quite incredible. He came off the bench and he scored, making his debut, <laughs> came off the bench and scored. And then on his 17th birthday, he was given a three-year pro contract at Ewood Park and he played for Blackburn Reserves when he was 17, came off the bench made his debut yep and you guessed that he scored again um, he then actually went um, out on loan to League 2 side Plymouth that was for a four month spell between June 2011 and October 2011 made 10 appearances for them down there <coughs> and then he actually came to us shortly after Kevin did Kevin Hitchcock joined us in the January as goalkeeper coach and uh, Tom joined the club uh, in April 2012, signing an initial 14 month contract, effectively it was. And then he was loaned out. He spent time on loan at League Two side Bristol Rovers last season between 
January 2013 and April made 17 appearances uh, but I only think seven starts and scored three goals it was mm. a great return I actually think he scored three goals in four games which yep. is fantastic and then in the summer just gone he signed a contract extension a one year contract extension so he's got a contract with us until the summer of 2014 and of course he made his odds debut last weekend against Ipswich as a substitute off the bench to score a 90th minute winner so he's certainly got form for that he has and he, he it's the right place right time isn't it the strike because if, if you get yourself in the box I mean Charlie on another day yeah he, he's a he's a for me he's a natural goal scorer as well Charlie and Obviously, he's, he's, he's got his shot away. It's, it's, I think it was a deflection it took, wasn't it? And then it's fallen into his path. And everybody, I said to you afterwards, I was just looking at the line. Yeah, he's got to be offside. Linesman, they, but yeah. you look at it and he, yeah, he was a mile onside. And he's just, it's probably the easiest goal he'll ever score. Uh, but it's probably the most memorable he'll ever yeah, score. Yeah, absolutely. Well. And also, he went into it a man in form. Last season, he scored five goals in 12 for the EDS. Yeah. And actually, during pre-season, made five appearances for the EDS and scored five goals, including a hat-trick. So he's certainly a striker in form going into this season. Uh, it be worth keeping an eye out on Tom Hitchcock. But as Kevin Hitchcock said today in his interview with Sky, he's had a, a minute or two in the limelight, yeah. but all the hard work starts now. So still a long way to go for young Tom Hitchcock, but I'm sure he is enjoying his moment in the limelight. Well, he seems to be quite level-headed, which I think is, is key, isn't it? And obviously he, his dad's played the game at the very, very highest mm. level as well. So if he does need bringing down a peg or two, just bring him back down to earth. I think he's got the, you know, the perfect dad and probably his role model as well to do that so great for him but um, a long way ahead in his career to go and fingers crossed he, he remains grounded and let's hope he makes a good career for himself yeah definitely we're going to be joined shortly by Charlie McCann with the latest odds from Bet Victor that's coming up but also we've got the London calling debate for the week and it's yeah. a very interesting one what would be your midfield quartet for this Saturday's 12-15 kickoff at Bolton? Obviously, there's question marks regarding Junior Hoylet's availability. He came off against Ipswich, which is a hamstring injury. What, what did Harry? You spoke to Harry earlier this week about injuries, and it, I believe he doesn't want to give too much away no, for obvious reasons. That's right. Obviously, Hoylet's there's question marks over him at the moment. Andy Johnson he missed the last game owing to a groin strain. Ali Fowling's been out with a thigh injury. So we did speak to Harry. Armand and Traore as well, another one who's yeah, got Yeah, absolutely. We, so we spoke to Harry asking for an injury update and he said, why would I give bold to my team news four <laughs> days early? They can wait, we tell them nothing. So that's why we know absolutely nothing. Um, his press conference uh, looking ahead to the game against Bolton is tomorrow, 9.45. That'll be streamed live. So he may give us a, a snippet of team news there. Yeah. But regarding the debate, who is your midfield quartet? Does Joey Barton go back on the right-hand side or stay in the midi middle? Gary O'Neill did excellently well. Give us your thoughts using hashtag LCI. We're now joined by Charlie McCann. Hi lads, good evening. Good Hi. evening to you, Charlie. Are you well this this um, this evening? We're very well, and uh, I believe you're joining us from from your hotel room. You on your travels at the moment? Yeah, I am. Yeah, um, um, f uh, well, especially for those with uh, with widescreen televisions, I'm on Sky tomorrow afternoon, um, uh, Sky Sports <laughs> News tomorrow afternoon, talking about the weekend football. But uh, every time I come on, they, they, it's it's uh, it's sad really because most of the country have to go and get sort of widescreen <laughs> or rent them or something like that so uh, well you look resplendent on the photo we're showing I must admit <laughs> we've just been speaking Charlie about um, young Tom Hitchcock who obviously came off the uh, off the bench to devastating effect on debut and scoring uh, we think it was his third touch in professional football for QPR what odds could we have got on Tom if indeed you had odds because very few people would have known about him um, prior to kickoff. we did we, we did have him, be, only because you know you sort of tend to um, tend to have sort of strikers and you know and go through the sort of squad and know where sort of. But if, if you know, it was certainly a bit of a thriller to me, where, you know, with, for him to come on and things like that, Tom. But it, it was great, and I, I must say, I, it, it wasn't until early in the week that I didn't know, I didn't know that he was of course Kevin uh, Kevin Hitchcock's son as well. So so that must be great for his, you know. And I saw the. Um, uh, I saw the pictures, everything of his father. He must be absolutely thrilled yeah. with. You can imagine that, you know, you you yourself of being a professional footballer there to come on. Not only to score, you know, I, I was going on last week, and you know, the we were, you know, Rangers were going to win even money. It was like finding money in the street, nil nil. I was thinking, what? Well, I'm going to get stick off the lads next Thursday, yeah. and then Tom. Good man, Tom, and uh, he, he's um, he was actually. I went back, and he was sixteen to one. 
um, to score uh, the first or last goal, of course. And, you know, and it's, it's likely, I would imagine, that he's going to uh, to be on the bench at um, at the Reebok on Saturday. Yeah. Um, but he's now into ten to one, and he's also uh, uh, seven to two to score at any time, and sixteen to one to be the top QPR goal scorer in the league. We've had to. Now we didn't. I must say, we didn't have Tom in the list for that. We did have him in uh, as goal scorer for Saturday. But good luck to him. Absolutely delighted for him. But he's 16 to 1 to be the top QPR goal scorer, 8 to 1 to be the first goal scorer at the Reebok, and uh, 7 to 2 to score at any time. Interesting odds. Um, Richard Dunn uh, went close. I think he had an effort that went into the side netting after Clint Hill hit the crossbar. What, what odds would we get on Dunny to score at any time this weekend? Because he's he's gone close. He's obviously a big threat from set pieces. He's 10 to 1 to score at any time and 40 to 1 to be the first goal scorer. And I, 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 you shot me last week, lads, when you said how few goals, because I always thought Richard, when he played for the Republic, when he played for uh, Villa, I thought, always thought he was a threat at set pieces. Unfortunately, I think most of Richard's goals have been own goals, but uh, <laughs> I think he holds a joint record with Jamie Carragher for Premier League going goals. He probably won't want me to remind him of that. Oh, no, you wouldn't. I mean, in that case, maybe that's... Um, <laughs> I, I, as an Evertonian, I do remember Jamie's um, um, own goals, with uh, most of them with, uh, with relish, but... Uh, yeah. Um, but no, he's forty to one anyway to be first goal scorer and ten to one to score at any time against uh, against Bolton. QPR legend Rodney Marsh said uh, in his column, um, or oh, no, actually on Twitter this week, he said that the most pleasing aspect of that win on Saturday was the clean sheet. What odds on a repeat this weekend? They're eleven to four um, to keep a, a clean sheet against. Um, uh, against the Trotters, um, Jermaine Beckford at Alda, 11 to 4. Mm. Um, and as you say, I, I, in a long season, you know that you need in the championship, you need to keep clean sheets. And you just get the impression that Harry must have been as, you know, almost as pleased as that, obviously thrilled with the, uh, with the win. Too. But uh, if we're generally, there's plenty of goals in their games as well. And I, I think a good back four. And uh, I think Harry would have been thrilled with that. But the R's are 11 to 4 to keep a clean sheet uh, against uh, uh, Bolton on Saturday. Charlie, we really appreciate you joining us again tonight. Final question, what's worth a quid of your money this weekend? Well, we've, we've put enhanced a few things um, for, for this weekend. Um, Rangers are new favourites as well, by the way. Uh, oh, they're right. to be promoted. Yeah, back into favourites uh, for, uh, for the championship. But the last time QBRB Bolton was in 1998, they won 2-0. We've got a couple of special offers enhanced. Rangers to beat... Bolton 2-0 on Saturday is 18-1. Again, that incorporates the clean sheet. Charlie Austin to score first and win 2-0, 55-1. to one. And for Tom to score first and it win two and um, Rangers to win 2-0, that's 80-1. to one. And we're talking about Dunny as well. For Richard to score first and the R's to win 2-0, we'll all be in heaven then. It's 350-1. to one. Charlie, thanks very much for joining us. Cheers, guys. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Appreciate Charlie. It. Cheers. Some interesting news from Charlie McCann, but... 16 to 1 for Tom Hitchcock to be the top scorer in the championship. I mean, he's looking after his money there with those oh, odds. Oh, or was it top scorer for QPR? We can check with Charlie next week. Top scorer for QPR. I'm being, I'm I'm being, being told by a man behind the camera that I'm right and you're wrong. Not for the first time today. No, no. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, 16 to 1 for, for a young, young kid. Well, I don't know. We'll see, won't we? Yeah. Time will tell. Definitely. OK, well, looking back on the, the win now against Ipswich, uh, we're going to be joined very shortly by Mark Prince, father of Kai, and we'll be getting his thoughts on the Kai and Prince Foundation. Also, details of him returning to the boxing back ring. Back in the ring. So we're going to get plenty of that He's coming He's flexing up. his muscles yeah. as we see it. There, there's, there's unconfirmed reports of a, a sparring session between Ian and Mark. <laughs> we don't know where we're at with that, but uh, we'll, we'll be joined by him shortly, so we're looking forward to that. Um, but looking at, at the result against Ipswich and whether we deserve the win, did we deserve the win? Did we did did we get lucky? Mick McCarthy said afterwards he felt it was even in the first half and perhaps QP had a little bit more of it in the second half. You look at opportunities, we had fourteen to their seven over the yeah. course of the ninety minutes. Rob Green pulled off an excellent save, let's not forget, but on another day, Charlie Austin could have had at least a couple, couldn't he? I think key for me was Cole Scuse, who, for me, ran the game from an Ipswich point of view in the first half. He went off at half-time, and Joey just took the game by the scruff of the neck. I thought, personally, I thought everyone said he, you know, he's played very well so far. I think that was his best game for us. Um, back in the centre of the park where, in my opinion, it's only my opinion, I think we get the best out of him. I thought he was outstanding. And what is it that every goalkeeper we come up against so far this season seems to be having the game of their life mm. I mean Chris Kirkland and then again at Huddersfield and then again 
uh, Scott Loach, wasn't it, at the mm. weekend? Um, let's hope that uh, Adam Bogdan doesn't have the uh, the game of his life, and Which we uh, certainly managed... capable of as well. Very Bogdan, much very so. Good goalkeeper. Yeah, very much so. But yeah, fully deserved. And yeah, okay, we left it to the last minute, but there's no great feeling in winning it in the, the right of death, is it? It, it? Dare I say, it, is there a monkey creeping onto the back of Charlie Austin? <laughs> I don't he's, think so. He's, he, I don't think anyone can dispute he's going to get a lot of goals. Yeah, I think he's once you get one, he'll, he'll, he'll score many. I mean, the way the way he hit the bar, obviously, yeah, it was unlucky, wasn't it? But to get he gets himself, you say, he gets himself in the positions. I, I've been really impressed with him. Mm. I, I knew he was a good player before he arrived. He's actually a better player than I yeah. gave him credit for. And Harry, Harry, might be slightly over the top in in some circumstances, but he thinks he can play for England one day. And, you look at the dearth of English English strikers, not necessarily in this World Cup, but going forward, it's got every chance of knocking the door. If Ricky Lambert's done it at his age, anybody, you know, he's proven that anybody, if you're given a chance, why not? Yeah, and you mentioned that we were talking earlier about the Inside of Magazine, issue three is out in September. We had another shameless Ger- club. Yeah, another <laughs> one. Uh, Jerry Francis actually told the story about when he brought, when actually when Jerry came in and took over as manager, he brought brought Les in to have a chat with him and he said I think you're good enough to yeah. play for England Les didn't and believe Les, him did Les he? laughed yeah. so, and, and Harry's saying similar about Charlie Austin well Les certainly went on to do very well for his country you never say never in football never say never um, Clint Hill made his 100th league yeah. appearance against Ipswich there was a banner in the stand he was obviously captain but playing at left back almost an unfamiliar position now for Clint yeah Hill. strange wasn't it to see him back at left back I mean I think I think centre half's his preferred position we actually caught up with him him afterwards, didn't we, for the website? And we said, "Oh, can we grab a quick word?" You know, hundredth, hundredth league win. He was a uh, hundredth week league win. That would be nice. Hundredth league appearance QPR, and he was almost taken aback. I think he knew in the build-up to the game, but with everything that happened, mm. it maybe slipped his, slipped slipped his attention. But yeah, it's, it's Clint's one of these guys. That, I mean, I love the chant. We just love watching Clint Hill. Mm. He's one of these guys that will turn up every week, give one hundred and ten percent. Very rarely dips below a seven out of ten. Yeah. Does he? he just gives gives everything. Great to see him wearing the armband and. Nice to see, you know, we've talked about the impact that new signs have made, but nice to see someone who's been here for a couple of years, Ditto Ali Fowling as well, mm. playing, playing regularly and enjoying their football and huge fan favourites as well, which is, which is great. And Gary O'Neill made his debut and he's, he's a sign in that in many ways slipped Under the below radar. the radar because yeah. there's all talk of different players come in, different players potentially come in and Gary O'Neill arrived and there wasn't much... There wasn't too much excitement, no. for want of a better word, amongst the QPR fans about it. They thought, oh, yeah, that's a good squad addition. I think because he'd been think think training like with us, um, people weren't sure whether he'd, he'd done enough to earn mm. a contract, but you couldn't help but be impressed. I mean, he, I don't think he gave the ball away. Um, slightly different player to Junior Hoyler, I um, mean, that Junior will beat a man with pace and skill, but he's very direct mm. and he's such an intelligent footballer. And, it's going to be hard for Harry to leave him out this week. It is, yeah, well, it, it goes into the debate. Um, use hashtag LCI. What would be your quartet for the game up at Bolton on Saturday? Does Gary ne- O'Neill come straight into the starting lineup? As I say, we're not sure on uh, whether Junior Hoylet will be available. We'll potentially know more tomorrow from Harry Redknapp's press conference. But also Ali Fowling, if he was to be fit, would he come back in? Gary think, O'Neill, Sean Wright Phillips, Jermaine Genius. I thought Sean Wright Phillips had one of his better games, QBR, I must admit. Uh, had a great chance first half that kind of sums up his goal-scoring exploits at QPR. He, he gets everything gone it, and it, you know, just blocked away for a deflection, and it went out for a corner. But it was one of his better games, and he, mm. he seems... I mean, he's a great lad, Sean, and he, you know him as well as I do. And regardless of his form, he, he's one that will just keep knocking on the door, knocking on the door. If he has to sit on the bench for a couple of games, he will do, but he'll bide his time. And he obviously shows that quality day in, day out. I know Steve McLaren certainly gave him a lot of caps for England, didn't he? Mm, I think he's right. maybe bringing out the best in him now, and... You know, we've got some good attacking options in wide areas and still a little bit of time to go in the window as well. We'll see what else is at, uh, up, up Harry's sleeve. Absolutely. And also, you look at the two best chances QPR had. Charlie Austin hitting the bar, set up by Sean Wright Phillips. Yeah. Tom Hitchcock's goal, set up down the left yeah. by Sean Wright Great Phillips run. as well. Great run. 90th minute, got to the byline, pulled it back. Charlie's there, sweeps one across goal with his left foot and Tom's there with a tapping. So, no, it was good because we kept... I, I said to you afterwards, we'd have probably we probably wouldn't have lost that. Well, we probably would have lost that game last year, mm. but we didn't give up. They, they, when I spoke to Ruben earlier this week in, in the interview, we'll be showing resilience, revitalization. These were the key words that kept yeah. the organization committed, spirit. These are all words that kept coming up in the convers- in the interview, in the conversation, and that does it. You sense that there's been a change, don't you, mm. uh, for the better? Yeah, well, there have been 
18 outs and five in, so it's been a complete transformation of the QPR Can squad. you name them without looking at your piece of paper? Without looking at the paper, <laughs> absolutely not. Should we run through them quickly? So the outs were Cherney, Campbell, Cissé, Samba, Hewitt, Mackey, Harriman, Doughty, Granero, Park, Derry, Tarat, Remy, Bothroyd, Hulse, Basingua, Ben Aim and Ferdinand, and the five ins that we know about, we've settled in really well, all five of them. Danny Simpson, Richard Dunn, Carl Henry, Gary O'Neill and Charlie Austin. So it's been busy already. Mm. Ten, day, uh, 10 days maybe to go. Will it get busier? One or two outs, one or two in, who knows? It's, it's an exciting time. Everyone loves deadline yeah. day, don't they? And Sky Sports News especially love and it. Domino's and Domino's love it, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, Domino's well. and Nando's, they, they make a few quid out of us, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, but the, the transformation of the squad uh, has, has led to, as has been openly said, a change in culture down at the Harlington training ground. You caught up with Ruben earlier yeah. this week for an exclusive interview, and here's what the QPR co-shareholder had to say. Ruben, thanks for joining us uh, on London Calling. Three wins and a draw from the opening three weeks of the season. I guess you're a very happy chappy as you sit here. Yes, um, of course I'm happy. Um, this, this winning thing is it's kind of new to us. Um, we haven't won this many games in a row, I think. Um, at least not this many. Well, we haven't been unbeaten this long, that's for sure. So it's definitely a new feeling for all of us. What have you made of the first few weeks of the season and how would you sum it up? I think um, there's a new, um, you know, it's, it's kind of like going through a revitalization. Um, the, the feeling here is good, uh, the feeling on the training ground is good, you know, everybody is working together in the same direction and uh, everybody is trying to, is working very hard. You know, I think that's the very, the, the, the big difference from last season. You know, we, we, we have a, um, a whole bunch of new people here, we've got some people out and I think the new mix and the new blend is going very well. When we spoke to you and Tony following relegation, you, you said lessons have been learnt um, and the culture of the dressing room would be transformed. Are you pleased with how that progress is, is, is coming along with still a couple of weeks as a transfer window to go? Um, well, I think the, the dressing room mood and atmosphere has definitely changed. Um, you know, like everything else, it can be improved further and we want to make sure it gets improved continuously. Um, we, we've learned a lot of lessons from, from last season, and uh, but you know this whole thing is a. I, th I think football is going to change very much as we go along as well. So there's a lot more things for us to learn uh, going forward, and I think the learning never stops when it comes to things like this. But um, we're definitely we're definitely wiser than we were last year, and I think some decisions along those lines have, have proven that. And we hope to you know improve things not just in dressing but in the club and overall perspective as well. It's two years to the week, actually, since yourself, Tony, and Din arrived at QPR. What would you say is the main thing that you have learned during that period? Um, I think the main thing that we've learned in the last two years is that, um, you know, it, it's, it's definitely much a... It, the, you have to get all the cultures right as well, you know, when it comes to all the parts of the club. And making sure that, you know, the, the culture is is similar for everyone here and we're all working towards the same objectives is the most important thing. I think um, when you have people from different parts of the world coming in here as well, you know, blending those things together is not so easy. So prioritizing to ensure that everyone is on the same page has been, I think, one of the most important things. It's very much a people business. I mean, a lot of businesses claim that they are people, the people come first, right? But this is the, the one business where people make up everything here you know it's not just the players it's also the fans and of course the management and, and the rest of the people that, that surround the club but you know it's uh, it's very much people business and you have to make sure that everybody's goals are aligned you've been a regular at loftus road since relegation have you stepped up your involvement since we were we were relegating from the premier league to the championship or is that just me going slightly over the top um, I think uh, I have stepped up and I'm, I'm getting more involved for sure compared to you know this time last season I've been around more during the, the summer. Um, Why would that be? Any reason in particular? Well, for me, I, you know, when, whenever I, I master do a job, I do the job. Um, and I think this season, I think that there's more, there's more there's more to be done this year. I think a lot more players, we needed to get out. I think the numbers show that we focus a lot on sales as opposed to bringing in. And, uh, and, and I've been asked to come and help out in, in doing that too. So, you know, whenever I'm asked to do something, I'll do something. And, and uh, so that's why I'm here doing more this year. And I guess that leads me on to the next question. Has relegation made you personally, as well as the board, more determined to succeed this year? I think it's a kind of a, um, you know, for us, the, the way we see it is like, it's, it's, it's allowed us to now, you know, get, you know, last year was a lot of pressure, you know, a lot of pressure for everyone here. 
um, I won't say relegation is a relief, but you know, relegation now means that we can start afresh and build up all over again. Um, it's something that you know we didn't want for sure, but now that we're in it, you know, it gives us a chance to to start afresh. But you know, if we were in the Premier League again this season, it'd be fantastic. But the amount of pressure that we were under last season was crazy. So, so it, you know, the, the ability to start fresh and, and and build something that we believe in uh, for the long term, I think, is 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 the part that I'm most excited about. So a great reaction from the board and from the staff and from the players so far. What have you made a reaction from the fans who sold out on the opening day against Sheffield Wednesday for the first time since 1979? That's quite a statement of intent from them. Well, the most important thing I think about the fact that we sold out on that day is that at least we didn't lose 4-0 or 5 nil. So um, they got to see a win, which is you know which has been a rarity in Loftus Road for at least the last 15 months. Um, and. Uh, you know, but for, for us, I, you know, it's not surprising that the fans support the team. I think the, the key thing for us is that we want them to continue supporting the players on the field. And all of the players on the field, you know, um, I think anyone that Harry puts out there is, is worthy of their support. And, and, I, and, I, and I'm, I like the fact that they backed every single one of them, even some of them who may, they may not personally like. I think they backed all, all of the players. And, and I think that's the kind of fans that we have, the fans that stick behind the team and uh, through, the tick, through, through the tough times and through the, you know, the good times as well. So, so it's, it wasn't surprising for me anymore because, I, you know, these are one of the best fans in the world and, and you expect nothing less from them. Question on everybody's lips: There's a week or so to go until the transfer window, the summer transfer window, slams shut. Very many outs and a few ins. Are you happy with the work we've done so far? I think we have a good squad. Um, I think um, this squad is, you know, good enough to challenge to go back up again. Um, it's a question of, I think, the determination that, we, that these players have, and I think that's what we're trying to make sure that we build up on. Um, you know, there's two weeks to go to the transfer window ends. You never know what can happen in the transfer window. We, I think there's a couple of players we're still looking to, to move out. So, you know, we, we will see some activity. In, in terms of moving in, it really depends who goes out as well, because, um, you know, we might need some replacement in some place, some positions. But I think um, it's, the, it's the best transfer window we've, we've had in the sense that we've done a lot of the business early. And we've got to know a lot of the things that we need up front. And, and we won't be struggling on the last day to try and do some crazy deals. So. But you're not ruling out there being further incomings over the next few few weeks? Yeah, it really depends on, on, on the outgoings as well. Because you know, uh, you know if, if, if some players do leave, we need to replace those positions. and So there could be some incomings as well. But in general, I think if nobody um, goes, um, you know, we probably would not have uh, any more incomings in that sense. But... Um, you know, there could be a few more loan deals as well, right? So, you know, uh, from now till the end of the window, I think, you know, a few more of those kind of deals might happen as well. You said how important the fans are. Finally, what would be your message to them as we go on this fantastic journey in the Championship? Seven points out of nine is a very good start. What's your message to them now? I think uh, the message to them is keep doing what they do best, uh, which is uh, support the manager and support the, uh, the team on the field. You know, and, and, and I love the way they do support the team on the field, you know, no matter who's out there. And, and I think just be, be themselves, I think that's the best message for them. And they're great fans and I don't think, you know, they, they need encouragement to do that. They, I think they just need to, to know that there are people backing them as well. OK, um, the thoughts there of Ruben, certainly exciting for the future. I'm delighted to say we've now been joined in the studio by <laughs> bo <laughs> boxing youngster, <laughs> Mark Prince. Mark, thanks very much Thank you. for Good joining to see you, us. Man. You've got, you've got a big, big fight coming up, which we'll talk about in yeah. a moment. Um, but firstly, I mean, it's been more than seven years, which is incredible, really, yeah, really since the, the tragic passing of, yeah. of Kai. And I'd imagine it's been a, a very difficult road. Very, very, yeah, like, it's amazing how difficult the road has been. Obviously, you, I can't put that over and describe it, but just just for an example, um, was it yesterday or the day before? Just the way it still hits you and impacts you, I, I finished the gym session, <clears throat> I was coming home, thought I was perfectly all right, listening to my music, um, got off the train, was walking down to go and meet my, 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 my other sons. And I just, as I was listening to one of the songs that I can find myself listening to now, but it was a song that I used to listen to around the time Kyan died. And I can hear that song all day now, it's not a problem. But 
it, it just came over me, the, 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 the grief, the pain, and I sat outside so my son wouldn't see me just pouring out in just the pain was just pouring out and you say seven years on it it, it don't feel like seven years at mm. all because what came out of me then and then my sons must have looked out the window saw me out there hugging me up but mm. they they get it they, they're already connected so yeah. most of the time they know mm. without even though they still ask you're right what is it dad and then they'll say is it kind and then I'll just be like this, and I'll, I'll give him a hug, and then he'll say, all right, Dad. Yeah. And then we'll just keep it mo moving, but it's very, very painful, man. Yeah, and, and he's, yeah, I tell you what, if you set one of us off, that's not, that's yeah. not part of the plan. He's welling up, it's not yeah. part of the plan. Yeah. Um, it's, it's incredible, isn't it? Because it's also coming up to the sixth anniversary of Ray Jones as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. I think it's, it's I've got the date here, you know, it's, it's this Sunday. Look, yeah. do you know what I remember about Ray? Queen's Park Rangers, um, in fact, Cayenne. Um, called me and said, Dad, QPR want you to talk to, with um, with Ray and train him because they knew that I'd done a lot of boot camp work mm. and hard type training to build not just the footballer but the fitness. So whether he played football, boxing, whatever, I would train athletes to get that strong character. Mm -hmm. And they wanted Ray to have a stronger character because they saw his talents. So, um, You're talking talk about the mental him, side as much as... The mental side of, of Ray. Yeah. They just saw a little something that, that I could work with and maybe build it up. So I was excited. I was like, Dad, have you called him? They wanted to, to do some work with him. So I talked to Andy. Andy was like, yeah, we wanted to do the work with him. And you know what? The next thing I hear is... Yeah. Um, it was oh tragic, man. Yeah. How, how's it changed... How's everything that, that happened with, with Kai and changed your... Your approach and how yeah. you approach not not just every day, but yeah. your whole outlook on life. Okay. Because the work you've done since then is yeah. flabbergasting, mind Yeah, mind. yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't looked at the work I'm doing. I haven't looked at it in any way like, oh, look what you're doing. And so it's people that I've done that. I've just got on with doing what's been in my heart. I think one of the, the most um, important things that I can never ignore is the fact that I cried out to God. I said, I, I, I've got no control about this, how I can deal with it. Um, I was lost. I didn't know how to deal with this. So I can't take praise for it or anything. I cried out to God. I basically said, look, there must be a reason. There must be something that I have to do. There must be a part that I have to play in this whole thing. It can't, my son just can't die and that's it. Mm. So, you know, in calling out to God, I believe that I started feeling different about the situation I was able to go in court not feel like I wanted to go and attack his family and just be so angry I was riddled with this burden of wanting to kill the guy whether I was in court or do something I needed to do something when I cried out to God that started to disperse then I began to feel a different feeling and began to feel like I need to do something to reach out yeah. that's more powerful than revenge yeah. love is more powerful than hate so I began to reach out in love and that started it just everything just changed and I know you've dealt with um, a lot of people who and it's part of the Kind Prince Foundation yeah. is reaching out to people who have already it's started already, to go down that yeah, road yeah. that must be very challenging because I think yeah. a lot of people would say should something like that happen to them yeah. the last thing they would want to do is be in a room with Some people who guys. have gone down that road yeah, so that, that's, that's an incredible thing to do have yeah. you surprised yourself by doing that? Uh, if I probably sat down and thought about everything I probably would be surprised but I, but I haven't I've honestly just got on with it let's do this I believe in, in what God's put in my heart I believe in what I have to do and that's where my life's changed that's the approach that's changed in my life it's different now I have this approach where it's like I want it's not about money it's not about making something of myself and being in a big house it's more about the impression i have on people the quality of relationships i have with everybody how the, the impact i have in your life when you meet me and, and yeah. that's more of a quality to me to live for than the things i previously lived for 
which was to be in this certain quality of living and you know and that's all lovely mm. and that's not gone where I'm like oh I don't care where I live that's not gone but it's balanced now because I realised in the 15 years Kyan had it wasn't his so much of his football that made an impression it was him mm. the character the individual so I thought okay well, I'm going to take that message that he's given me. So I've taken all kinds of message. I've taken what I've got in my walk with God and I've taken it to the people on the street and said, look, I believe in this. This is what I believe worked and it worked for my son. That's why he was successful. He was focused and that's why I'm able to get through to you. So it's, it's touching young people's hearts. You, you said that you haven't really thought too much at length about the yeah. work you do with the yeah. foundation, but yeah. you must be proud of everything you've achieved with that because it... it I mean, I think back to the, the show with Noel Edmonds right at the very yeah, beginning, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and and the chance, and I remember they gave you the minibus, didn't they? Yeah, the van, yeah, and yeah. years on from that, mm. you've got to be so proud because as QPR fans, we see what you're doing, and and the trust see what you're doing. There's certainly a sense of pride yeah. from us here. So surely, yeah, personally, yeah, you must feel that definitely. But when you're a guy that set your goals, um, until you achieve those goals. I personally won't have that feeling of that great sense of pride because mm. I didn't do this to just get on the show and they give me a car and I've done this to set something in place that cannot be moved when I'm gone years from generations now generations on yep, yeah. young people are going to have this place it's going to be a, a, a benchmark where others can use it to help other young people until that happens and that's why I've gone back into boxing because I need to up the ante because I'm being, I feel like I'm being ignored here. I feel like they bring me on the Sky News, they bring me on ITV, I do, I do all this stuff. Mm-hmm. I've gone on School of Hard Knocks program proving how my stuff works but where are the resources? Where's the help? Where's everyone saying, you know what? I hear what this guy is saying. I feel his pain. Let's work with him and make something happen. And um, so I put myself a part of where you cannot ignore me. I put myself right back in the front line again. You, you've certainly done that. 44 years mm-hmm. old. You mm-hmm. last fought in 1998 professionally. 1999 yep. professionally. And you're, you're going back in the ring in, in Kyan's memory. you got to be mad, isn't you? That is incredible. <laughs> what, is, what is wrong with you? That is incredible. Like, when I stop... For a set and I do think about that then I go wow that's amazing and then I get excited like yeah you can tell <laughs> I mean when you walked in you had a big beam you're always yeah. smiling anyway so yeah I don't think I've, I've seen the day that I met you when you haven't been smiling <laughs> and when you come up here after of the game and yeah. Harry walks yeah. out and you give Harry that's a, right. it's fantastic to yeah. see but are you I mean you're looking forward to the fight that goes oh, without saying oh, definitely, definitely confident no? confident definitely you can do the job definitely confident definitely in fact I'm going to shock people that's the thing, you know, they, they got to recognise that, you know, I'm just not another guy coming along saying, yeah, I want to do this, I want to do that. No, I'm coming to go past what your expectations are and I'm coming to shock and surprise you. I'm going to look a million dollars. Trust me, I'm not going to look no 44. What is it they say? Talk um, the talk, walk the exactly. walking boxing? <laughs> let's do this. You're going to do both. I'm going to do this. I'm looking forward to it. So, you know, I know boxers talk, but I'm not in the long talk. Let's get in the ring. <laughs> let's do this. Let's get it on. Seriously, You're, man. you're um, known as being a, a motivational speaker. Yeah. It, and in the words that you use, one of your lines, everyone has to deal with fear. Don't fight it. Dance with it. Beautiful. Is, is, that, is there fear going into the ring? Oh, there's always fear going into the ring. But it, 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 it's, it's not the same type of fear that people might automatically think of. Oh, fear like this. No, when you've trained hard, when you've done all you know you're supposed to do, when you're going up to that ring, that's adrenaline flowing mm. about what's going to be happening next because you still can't answer the questions until you answer the questions. So you don't know what's really going to happen. So that gets you a journey. That's where the fear comes in. But as far as yourself, the confidence about who I am and what I'm about to do goes far beyond that fear that is that plays this part in there. So I'm going out there fully confident knowing I've done my work. I'm ready. Remember, I was a world-class fighter before. I know what it takes to be there. So I'm not fooling myself. 
you know, if I know I can't do this and I don't look the part, stand down. Yeah. yeah. And, but you've been sparring with 20-somethings. Exactly. All the young guys, they're in their peak. They're starting off their careers. They're in their peak. You know, whatever the stage they're at, I'm hanging with them. I'm training with them. I'm pushing harder than they're pushing, whether we're doing cardio, whether we're doing running, whether we're doing sparring, whatever mm. it is, you know, I'm always competing with myself. And to be a motivational speaker, you have to be able to motivate yourself. Well, you certainly look in good shape. Yo, definitely. I'm always shocking him at the gym. You know, Spencer Oliver, who's commentates for Sky. Yeah. You know, we're good friends, but he's a big fan. He loves when I come in the gym on my work rate. And, you know, it's, it's really good to be in great shape. Kai was obviously into his football. Did he like his boxing too Loved growing his up? boxing. Look at that video he's got on, on, on YouTube where yeah. he's in his bedroom where no one's watching him. He puts his phone out and he starts recording <laughs> him. So I'm what beautiful, fast hands he had. Are you doing this for him in his memory? Um, I'm doing this... It started because of him, so everything I do, the mm. base of it and foundation is Kyan. Yeah. And the reason why this has to be done is because you're not going to be able to ignore me when I am the man, the <laughs> fighter of the hour. When I'm noticed now, I can be able to link up with the other people that are in important positions, they call them celebrities, or whatever position mm. they're in, I can be able to get everyone together and I'll say, you know, we want to support you doing this, I can get the events going, and that's what we need to do. So effectively, what you're actually doing is you're putting your body online, going into exactly. the boxing ring, so without meaning to bring myself. in your age again, at 44, going in at a very high level as yeah. well, yeah. and ultimately it's to create an avenue yeah. to raise awareness. Yeah. You got it, you nailed it. So I'm putting my body and myself on the line, risking my own, because it's, it's hard. The training every day, you're getting hit by guys who are powerful, fast, young. Um, you got to take it, you got to break through the pain barriers, there's more injuries, you need to rest more. We all know the stuff that goes on when you're older. You know, you don't yeah. heal up quickly like this. We're six weeks now until the fight? Yeah. Six weeks, yeah. you're feeling ready? Oh yeah, yeah. A couple yeah. more notches up the ladder between now and then? Definitely a you... couple more yeah. notches. Because in my head, I know what I'm trying to attain. Yeah. So I know it's not going to all happen in the first fight, but I know what I want to see by the first fight. Yeah. So I'm working on that. So I'll continue to do that and just be a sharp, crisp, knowledgeable fighter. What's changed is my calmness. I'm more mature. I've got nothing to prove. I'm just going to go in there and do me. And when I do me, it's great results. You said to us earlier that uh, you'd love to see Sir Les there. I think you've invited oh, him along. Definitely. You said that Joey him. Barton's got no choice. He's no, going to be coming, coming along as a big boxing he's a lively player. Me and Paul are going to be there. <laughs> just, to, just a quick plug. Friday, 4th of October, York Hall, Bethel Green. Ticket, standard seat at a 35 quid. Ring size, 60 quid. This is great value for money. Yes. Um, www.tkoboxoffice.com is the place to get them. Yep. Or just go Mark Number One N O One Mark Number One Prince on Facebook if you're on Facebook. Mark Number One Prince. Get going to the like and we can sell tickets, t-shirts to support me over there, and some of the money from the t-shirts will go to KPF as well. And how much would it mean to you to have QPR fans there? Oh look, that's been one of my biggest things that I've always wanted. What I want is that well, I see Ricky Hatton out there, Manchester City, mm. Manchester City, and they all come out and support him. Why can't QPR have their own band of supporters together with the boxing? Let's link it all together. You know, Kai and Prince meant a lot to QPR, mm. and maybe we've got a great relationship. So. Let's make it happen now. I'm playing. I want all the QPR fans to, to, to buy the tickets, fool the place out. Let's sing those songs in there, mate. I tell you, can't be beat. So, so the atmosphere is going to be special. So, so let's do that and let's get your messages of support for Mark. It's incredible what he's doing, really, when you actually stop and think about it. Um, use hashtag LCI, get your messages in, uh, and also Mark Number One Prince at Facebook. Mark Number One Prince yeah. on, Twitter as, on well. Twitter as well. Get your yeah. messages directly to Mark, show your support yeah. for him um, from the QPR fans, it'd be, be great to do. And of yeah. course, we've seen you in and around Loftus Road si yeah. this season yeah. as well, and you're season. even doing commentary for the blind for the Brilliant. Ipswich game. Is there anything this man can't do? Oh, it's incredible. Yeah. Next, he'll be on the sofa permanently nicking your door. <laughs> <laughs> But you enjoyed that, the commentary, didn't oh, you? I loved it. it and you exciting. predicted that the goal was coming. It was, that was even more exciting. Like, just saying it, like, they're going to get this goal, you know, and it was, what, eight minutes to go or yeah. something? So he's Mystic Meg, uh, pro brilliant. boxer. Brilliant. 
So Amazing charity worker. He can speak a good game here as well. <laughs> with, with the, with the, um, the mo- what I find interesting is um, when Ray Jones was around and yeah. there was talk about you working on his mental strength. I think yeah. a lot of people, including me, mm. assumed this mental strength that you've got yeah. came as a result of what you've been through. But in fact, no. it goes back before that. It it's something you, you've always had a... It's something I've had a bit of determination to, to, to better myself when I was a little kid a determination to come off the streets when I was in my teens coming up to 2021. 20, I wanted to be a, a, a better role model for Kyan who was one at the time, Tanisa was um, for, um, for his sister. And I thought, what am I doing? I'm out on the streets, you know, what's, what future have I got? And, you know, all these things of the past has now been used as tools for the mm-hmm. future. But I didn't know, you know, all, all this. I was just thinking, oh, you're just a bad, kid coming up and that's why I've got time for these kids that's why I won't just think you know what you're finished you've used a knife that's it for you Mm. because I've seen people's lives been turned around I turn my life around you know Mm. so so if I can do it as I tell everyone you know on school of hard knocks anyone can do it anyone can do it it's a great story isn't it Paul it's and and sitting here and listening to it um, and obviously we, we we're lucky enough to to meet Mark regularly and we see the, the fantastic job that you're doing with the foundation. What's the latest then, If just before we end, we end the interview, what's the latest with the foundation? What can we keep our eye out on? Um, we're, we're doing a lot of infrastructure at the moment because despite things coming on the TV and it looking so wonderful, like, wow, KPS flying high, mm-hmm. it's been difficult. Not everyone's come on and been as good as their word. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people have just seen it as product placement. Oh, if I say I'll do this and, you know, so in the background, people's ideas are quite different from the reality. Mm. And in reality, it's been about me, a few other people really getting their heart and head down, getting into the schools, talking to the kids. But we want programs locked now. We want to lock everything down, get ourselves within the curriculum, you know, have this building. Because so many kids, like, where are you based, Prince? Where are you based? Where's Kind Prince Foundation? Mm. That's all we want. And then we can do, you know, a pilot program that will show everyone with this base we have, we can make the changes that's needed and we can start bringing these, you know, franchising them all over the place and use the same, you know, ethos in different places and it'll work. Great to hear from you, mate. Wonderful. Really appreciate you joining us. Yeah. I'll give the, those tickets another plug. www.tkoboxoffice.com. The big fight, Friday, 4th of October, York Hall, Bethel Green. Certainly everybody here at QBR wishes you all the best. Yeah, and I know you guys will be there, so I look forward to it. Do it for the R's, do it for Kyle, and we'll all be proud. And remember to tweet your message of support, support uh, using hashtag LCI. Get the message straight through to Mark Prince and show, uh, show him how the QBR fans are right behind yeah. him for that big fight on Friday the 4th. I tell you what, I, I cannot wait to see what happens when the you get in that ring. atmosphere in that place on that night. It's so tight, isn't it? Trust me. Do you know what? It, it's almost the loftiest road of boxing no, because it's it so, is, everyone's close to the it ring, is aren't It's going to be beautiful, honestly. When, don't miss it. QPR fans are going to make it amazing because just the feeling in that mm. place... You know, the opponent's just going to feel like, whoa, what have I got myself into? It's going to be an emotional walk for you up to the ring. A very emotional walk. What's your ring walk? I what's your, what's your song, do you know? I, I, I haven't I haven't locked it down yet. That, I do that. It takes me a while to, to lock down the song. I think about a few things, um, and, and I've got a couple of things in mind. I've, all, I've even thought, I wonder if you're going to break down on the way, mm. you know, down to the walk. But whatever happens, when I hear ding, ding, <laughs> you know, okay, I'm too... <laughs> He's ready. <laughs> so, however it goes, man, I'll be ready. We're going to put on a great night for you. Great stuff. Okay, and on uh, this weekend, i tell you what, this hour has flown yeah. by, hasn't it? Um, this weekend on Saturday, of course, we've got Bolton, so we want to get the your predictions for the for the game against Bolton. And here's a, a little statistic. It'll be our stat of the week uh, from the legendary at QPR underscore stats. This is what he's got for us this week. Played Bolton more times than any other He's current Premier, Championship, or League One team without ever week. having a nil-nil draw. We're, we're, we're struggling with that QPR stats. We're live to QPR stats. We're not live. We got we got real problems. We got real <laughs> issues there. Um, okay, what we can tell you is that ne- we've played Bolton 26 times. And we have never played out a goalless draw. So does that make you lump on a goalless draw? 
Or does it make you go completely the other way? Talked about earlier, didn't you? Topic of debate, just to change the subject. Had a few through QPR underscore 2013. I play five midfield, not four. Austin up front, left to right, SWP, Fowlin, if fit, Henry, Barton, O'Neill. Minxie Martin says Barton, Henry, O'Neill, SWP. A lot of people guessing at the competition, which will reveal Mitchell 2201, O'Neill, Barton, Fowlin, SWP. So, you know, lots of different. A good mix. Yeah, good mix. Minxie Martin also said, My heart goes out to Kyle and Prince. Forgiveness. Jamie QPR said, What a very moving interview on London Calling. And QPR Liam just says, Rest in peace, Kyan. And then the heart sign. So it's gone down really well tonight. Beautiful. Okay, and don't forget, Friday the 4th of October, www.tkoboxoffice.com, York Hall, Bethnal Green. Let's see if we can fill the place out with QPR fans. That truly would be an emotional, emotional night. Um, before we go, competition details. The question was, who did Les Ferdinand most enjoy playing with during his time here at Loftus Road? Here's Les to give us the answer. player I enjoyed playing at QPR with the most was Ray Wilkins. It was Mr. Ray Not Wilkins. How many got that right, Moz? I'm no, telling you. No? Okay, well, one man who did get it right was Steve-O at Steve-O underscore zero seven. Many congratulations, well Steve-O, done, Steve-O. At Steve-O underscore zero seven. Um, send us your details. Email paulm at qpr.co.uk. Um, and we'll get you a signed shirt, personalised, signed by the man of your choice. Quick predictions, Moz, for the weekend before we go. With uh, 1 0 QPR tight. Mark Bolton, QPR. 2 1. 2 1. I'm going to go for a narrow 1 0 as well. But live on Sky, uh, obviously, we'll be taking a few up there, I'm sure. But live on Sky, 12 15 for those that can't make it up. So fingers crossed we can continue the unbeaten run. Indeed. He's going to put some in now. It's going to be wrong. Time for Charlie, yeah? Yeah, he's going to be scoring some goals, mate. I believe everything this man says, so I'm now going to have a bet on Austin too. Well. <laughs> OK, thanks again for joining us. Thanks, Ian, and a big thanks to Mark Prince as well. Great to have him here. We'll be back same time, same place next week.